10 or stop by their location 5030 South Pine Avenue in Ocala, just past the drive-in. And of course, don't forget to visit them on the web, CaptainTUpholstery.com. The very best in quality is Captain T's Upholstery. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 24 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. Boy, it's been a, it's been some week. Huh? That story out of uh, Parkland is, uh, is obviously still resonating with everybody, not just in Florida, around the country. Very much so. Oh, gosh, can you do you remember when you were in school? Do you remember? Do you remember? Uh, you know, you you just it's just school school years are a different time of our lives, yeah. and, and that's your whole world. You don't you don't even think outside the school walls a whole lot. Um, and uh, you know, if you if you've got a crush on a on a on another person, um, and they don't seem to think the same way about you as you do them then that you 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 all in a, what's a good word there you're all in a bond whatever a tizzy a, yeah uh, you're all in a tizzy whatever yeah. whatever um yeah anyway so and then some people are just plain mean they're hey there are mean people in my life now yeah you know there are they they stay away from me but they, <laughs> 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 there were mean people on the highway holy mackerel Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw this guy the other day. I was driving in the right lane, so this wasn't affecting me, but I watched. Uh, in the left lane, it was crowded traffic, and I know that this uh, this car probably had some older folks in it because it looked like one of those cars, like an old big Cadillac. Yeah, right. Right? Then that's usually an older, older person. Okay. So in the left lane, probably hoping to turn left soon, in the dark, and there's a guy behind him flashing his lights. Flash, 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 flash. And now he, he is so close. He is so close, or she could have been a woman. You don't know. I don't know, but just just trying to get the poor person to move over, and of course, then then came the part where the person had to turn, and it was like, "Hello, don't you realize people make left turns from that left lane? It's mm-hmm. not only a passing lane." Yeah, exactly. Oh gosh. Well, exactly. Anyway, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't even begin to know what to do about human psychology. However, we do have, fortunately, in our world, people who've studied psychology. Katie Hurley is one of them. Uh, she is a child and adolescent psychotherapist, um, a parenting expert, an author. I think she's in L.A., right? Yes. Uh, she earned her B.A. in psychology and women's studies from Boston College and just has a whole load of credentials. She's got a book called No More Mean Girls, The Secret to Raising Strong, Confident, and Compassionate Girls. I am all for this. Uh, I want strong, confident, and compassionate daughters and and I want the sons to be respectful, and I don't want any mean boys or girls. Katie Hurley, good morning, Katie. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Are you in L.A. right now? I am in L.A., so it's a little early here. See, I, I fell in love with L.A. a long time ago, so I do like that area. Thank you for getting up early. So so, you, so what do you think? I, mean, I, I hate to drag you into this story from here in Florida, but what... I mean, that sounds like a mean boy, the, the boy who did the shooting. He's 19 years old, but... It sounds like he had well, some troubles. It, it does. I mean, it sounds like there are a lot of complicating factors playing into it, and I think we're only learning about it minute by minute as they release details. But, you know, the bigger picture is how do we help kids better and faster and sooner so that we don't have more of these instances? Right. I know. And, and, and I don't, you know, everybody's really couldn't care less about this guy but the truth is if you were his parents right now you you are beside yourself not to mention the parents of the kids he killed uh so oh, absolutely. if they could turn back the clock they would give anything to to raise a child who doesn't do this and and i, I don't I, you never hear about girls doing this though i don't know if i'm right about that right it seems like boy, I, yeah I have, right i'd have to check the statistics but it does seem to happen more with male students yeah well, girls, seem and, to be, you know, well, we know that we know that violence is a indicator of this behavior. You know, everybody wants to scream mental health, but what we know is that white males are more likely to do this. So we have to look at that. And I graduated in 1972, and we had some mean girls in our school that if they didn't like you, they would physically start beating you up and uh that was was not a uh, a good thing but thank god they didn't come in with guns and things like that but girls can be mean too 
absolutely. And, you know, we're seeing people keep asking me what's happening with girls now. And we're seeing a decrease in some of that physical behavior. But now what they're doing are, is psychological warfare. And it's every bit as damaging as coming in, punching somebody in the face, sometimes even worse. And it lasts for years to come. And uh, that's what motivated that 12-year-old to hang herself uh, last month because the other 12 year, two 12-year-old girls was mm. bullying her on Facebook and everything, and all of a sudden she hung herself. Absolutely. Kids can't get any relief from this behavior right now in 2018. It used to be you could go home, you could hang out in your room, get comfort from your parents, and it was over for the day. But now it goes on. Just like the 24-hour news cycle, bullying is a 24-hour news cycle. It just goes on and on mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. smartphones and computers. The bullying that was uh, center stage about a week ago was the Me Too movement bullying, and it was by men toward women. And, and again, if you're the parent of a daughter and uh, she's in the workplace and, and she's being subjected to me- bad men's behavior, uh, or men's bad behavior, maybe that's a better way to say that, um, Oh my gosh! So yeah, I, in a way, I, I love the, the the subtitle of the book, "The Secret to Raising Confident, Strong, Confident, and Compassionate Girls." I mean, that's what you want. It, you, did you ever hear the story about Carrie Fisher when one of her friends was being uh, sexually harassed? She wrote the guy a letter. <laughs> I mean, she was a, she was a strong woman, wasn't she? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we, you know, we need to raise girls to have the confidence to stand up to men and other women and yeah. we need to raise them to make the right choice and to just be up standers in this world because too many there are so many bystanders they're everywhere we're all watching terrible things happen and we need to raise our kids now to be upstanders who get absolutely. in there absolutely yeah uh, you're um addressing in the book that uh, moms and and dads should have conversations with their daughters as young as three years old, uh, is a, a three-year-old able to comprehend this kind of conversation? Well, a, a th- you know, a three-year-old is obviously different than a 13-year-old in what they can understand, but you can talk to kids at their developmental level and help them understand right from wrong and how they can be helpers instead of, you know, standing by and ignoring something. So you can talk to a three-year-old about... If one person is not being nice to another person, go get the teacher. You know, that's something they can understand and internalize and remember to do the next time they're at school. So we can talk to kids about how they can be helpers at every age. Um, we, we use the term spoiled. Um, does, does a spoiled child become a mean child? Sometimes. Um, You know, one thing we're really finding is this idea of toxic competition. You know, Americans are sick with competition right now, and we've taken sports, which used to be a healthy outlet, and we've made it into this hotbed of competition for girls and boys where they're climbing all over each other to be the best, to get on elite teams, you know, to pave the way to Harvard or wherever it is their parents want them to go. And what we're finding is the kids are turning on each other because of it. You know, their egos are enormous. They can't stand to lose. They can't get along with other kids because they're too busy trying to beat them. So, you know, spoiled, yes. Uh, You know, kids who are stuck in this world of competition, yes, that's a problem. Achievement pressure is is a problem in causing kids to turn on each other. So we have a lot of work to do as parents. And there's this veil that's being lifted about the perception of public schools and private schools. It used to be years ago that if you go to public schools and you're not doing well or you're being bullied, that your parents would put you into a private school and this won't happen. But now everything's so public. I mean, I I know, you know, there are a, a few uh, private schools where the, the 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 children will go if 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 they're not from an affluent family, they'll give scholarships for the child to go there. Well, the child that goes there on a scholarship, the students at that private school know that they're not from this affluent family, so they even bully that person because they don't have as much wealth as they do. Absolutely. I mean, private schools have their own problems that they're facing, you know, with elitism, like that kind of behavior, uh, sexual assault on campus. There are all kinds of things happening, and stories are just coming to the surface now because people are empowered, finally, to speak up and say, enough, this is, you know, we can't do this to our kids anymore. Yeah. 
unfortunately, we're in so deep with some of the parenting practices we've, we've all adopted over the past few years that it's going to take time to really climb back out of it and, and raise empathic and compassionate kids instead of kids who are just trying to win all the time. I mean, Harvard is doing tons of research into this, and they're finding that, you know, empathy is down 40% among our teenagers right now. That's a huge dip in empathy, and we need to work hard to write wow, that wow. before it's too late. So t- tell me about the book. Do, do we take the information in the book and use it as an antidote for what is happening in the rest of the world? Our, our kids go to school and come home. Obviously, they're exposed to that very thing you're talking about. What can we do in our home environment that, that can undo that? Well, that's really why I wrote the book, because I thought, you know, what we need to do is be proactive. Instead of just, we all scream what's wrong when something goes drastically right. wrong in this country, but we need to be proactive. And so the book is full of tips to help raise kids with higher self-confidence, to help kids learn how to be assertive, to help them learn how to be compassionate and caring humans out in the world. And parents can, there's tons of research in it, and there's tons of ideas, and parents can kind of go chapter by chapter a little bit at a time. and and just take some ideas and really focus on raising those kids with good, strong, soft skills, because we find that in the end, those are the things that are important. Those are the skills that get people to a successful adulthood, and, you know, not uh, all awards. And I think um, the uh, social interaction, I think children need time for themselves because sometimes there are parents and they're busing their children all over the place all week long to school and then after school activities sports cultural events and they're not giving the child a time to be just by themselves to figure out what is it that they want to do absolutely we have robbed children of childhood pretty unilaterally at this point i mean kids are from five years old on they're just stacked with adult directed activities and That's a huge mistake because kids learn how to be, you know, nice people. Kids learn how to problem solve and they learn how to manage conflict by being with other kids and just doing stuff that they want to do. And Mm. our children don't do that anymore. You know, you're you're kind of making me feel good about the way I raised my son. I I took him camping all the time. We went on road trips and I wasn't even, I'm not a psychologist. I just thought, hey, this would be fun. But now that you're talking about it, I'm thinking, oh, wow, all that stuff, just, just being together and... You know, having challenges, physical challenges like hiking and, 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 you know, just fishing and just stuff like that that is just usually categorized, categorized as fun. But maybe the bigger thing that was happening was time together. I don't know. I think so. Absolutely. And that's, and that's the real learning. And I tell people all the time the number one thing kids tell me they want from their parents is time spent together. They don't mm-hmm. want to go to Disney World. They want to go for a hike or they want to go have a hamburger together or an ice cream cone. They just want us to pay attention to them, to put our phones away, and to just hang out. Yeah, That's what they do. Katie, I, want, I wanted to mention, somebody had texted me. I, I guess I mentioned uh, something about the the shooter's parents, and uh, somebody corrected me that the, the boy had no mother. I guess she died a couple months ago, so I apologize. She died four months ago, yeah. Yeah, I apologize for And I, I wasn't implying that she did anything wrong. I was just trying to figure out what would you know how how do you go through this you know if you are the parent of somebody so and but i think i, I think no more mean girls i mean can you can you put us maybe make us like a fly on the wall in your office and what's the conversation you're having with the parents you work with um maybe there's a circumstance that you could even make it fictional and and what would be a secret or or a, a technique or a method to uh try to nip it in the bud One conversation I find myself having a lot with parents is that we have to stop trying to engineer children's childhood. So girls tell me all the time that their moms make their friends for them, that they're only allowed to be friends with kids of the moms that the moms like or that they've known for a long time. Because And moms all look at moms and say, well, why can't they make their own friends? Why can't they have different friends now that they're, you know, 10 years old? And they'll say, well, because it's easier. I already know the other mom. I trust them. I don't have to ask hard questions. I know they'll keep them safe. So moms like to engineer social relationships to make sure that their girls have friends and to make sure that they know the parents well. And what happens is those friendships don't always work out. I mean, as you know, we all mm. grow and change, and sometimes friendships disappear and other ones emerge, and that's life and that's normal. Uh, but we're not letting girls do that anymore. And then if a girl gets stuck in a group where they're not being very kind to her, moms will say things like, well, just give them another chance. And 
you know, oh, I'll talk to that mom and I'll fix it. You know, the new thing right now is where moms get together, they get the girls together to have these coffee dates and work yeah. out the problem. And the girls <laughs> hate them. I mean, they, they can't. Oh, really? Can't. They, they need to stop these. Yeah. Oh, because wow. they have nothing in common. They're not compatible and they, they want to have their own friends. Right. And they, they're forced to just sit there and stare at each other and pretend that they're friends when they don't want to be. Oh, my you gosh. Know? So I'm, I I'm th- telling parents all the time, you know, draw a friendship map with your kids. You know, draw out all the pictures, all the places you go, church, school, temple, you know, YMCA, whatever it is you do, draw it out on a piece of paper, write what friends are where, and start looking at those and saying, which friend would you rather spend more time with? Let's work on that friendship. Well, good. Yeah, wow. You see, you're seeing it differently than they are seeing it themselves. And in, in their defense, I'm just, I mean, I know these are fictional people we're talking about, but in their defense, it seems like they are had had good intentions. You know, they just wanted to. You know, doesn't it seem like that to you? Oh, absolutely. It always. I always say it comes from our hearts. You know, it comes from a good place. We're trying to help. We think we're doing the right thing so that our kids won't have to suffer from heartache. But the truth is, kids come home from school with broken hearts all the time, and mm-hmm. yeah. trying to pave a smooth way isn't going to work. But what we can do is listen to them and be with them and empathize with them and say, geez, that's really hard, and I'm really sorry that you're going through that. How can I help? Wow. And uh, there was a movement a few years ago by Congress, and they wanted to make a law that when students are during their lunch breaks in the colleges and the universities, that they need to eat lunch with people other than who they hang out with well that that didn't fly too well but now this is starting to be invoked in uh, elementary schools uh, up to the high school level that the teachers are trying to make students that don't hang out with each other to have lunch with these other students uh, for whatever reason and I do agree with you I I think that's wrong because you should be able to choose your own friends and you should be able to try on lots of different friendships and, and move around and not have to be stuck in one small group. And that's consistently a problem with girls. Boys tend to float. They're floaters more. They move and, you know, they want to play and have fun and do interesting things. So mm-hmm. they go where the action is. But girls stick with these very small cliques from a young age. It starts at six. And God forbid that clique doesn't want a girl in it anymore, then her whole world is shattered. You know? oh. So what is, what is the psychology of the mother, if you can maybe give us some insight into that? Is she afraid that if she's not her daughter's friend that, she, that, that she'll lose her to, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? I, I'm thinking maybe there's, maybe there's a real but misunderstood reason. Well, one thing I'm finding right now with parents, you know, in their 30s and 40s right now is that they're remembering things that happened to them when they were kids and when they were teens, and they really don't want those things to happen to their kids. Uh, and I think we all have those moments. We can all identify with that. Something yeah. we went through that we just hope and pray does not happen to our own child. Right. But, you know, that kind of transference isn't fair to our kids because they're not destined to repeat our mistakes or to go through things that happened to us that were not our fault at all. You know, they have their own lives and their own thoughts and their own ideas. And we have to let go of those feelings we have to work through our own emotions and let go of that so that they can live their lives i want to brag about you a little bit i i went on amazon and uh you don't see this very often 25 reviews the book has only been out a couple of weeks every single review is five stars um and currently the book on kindle is number 20 in the school age children category and the, uh, that's the Kindle book. And the physical book is number 85. Number 85. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. There's millions of books on Amazon. Yeah. That, that, you've got to be happy with that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I am. It's, the, the response has been really, really great. And, you know, I love, I travel around the country talking to schools and parents and stuff. And I really do love being able to spread the word and help parents a little bit here and there. Do you know, this morning we had a story about the police in New York uh, arresting two guys who they believe were up to no good. They were building a bomb. They found notes on their computers and in their index cards indicating that they were really trying to do some harm, probably to a school in Harlem is what it sounds like. Um, and, and and yet it's it's a small story because nothing actually happened. They got it before the bad stuff happened. I think that's that same thing applies to what you're doing. If if the book reaches the people and they're really getting it, and it sounds like they are looking at the reviews here, then the the mean girl that might have come out uh, grown up as a mean girl 
won't be there, and we won't have that story. And I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, it wouldn't make the news, but I mean, it, it it would be bad on her. Can you imagine what a mean girl grows up to be, and how she probably has a hard time in the workplace? Absolutely, and just making adult friends. And, you know, I see it all the time. It's mm. it's not a mystery where mean girls come from. You know, I mean, we always say apple trees don't grow pears, and bullying is a learned behavior. So. It's something that trickles down, you know, through generations, and then there are a variety of reasons it happens, but we do need to look at our own behaviors and how we treat other people. Does this happen in, in different cultures outside of the United States? Have you done any observations like in the uh, Japanese culture or the French culture? Hmm. Well, I can tell you that I know that uh, England has quite a problem with it, and Australia is constantly trying to find ways to decrease bullying and relational aggression. So it kind of is a worldwide problem. Um, You know, it's just, it's something that exists in our world. And we see it with adults. You know, we act like this is a kid problem, but we see it with adults all the time. I want to to tell you one thing real quick. We we have like three minutes left. Um, There was a lady who used to work here at the radio station, and uh, and she was really nice. I had no problem with her at all. and and yet Robin, who never gets mad at anybody, was so angry at this woman. The, and there was another lady here, also sweet lady. She'd bring in pastries. Oh, oh what the heck happened? Yeah, well, the other ladies, too. Right, other ladies, too. So here, my point yeah. is, we had a mean girl in our presence who, who, right. who, who grew up, but who was never mean to me. She was oh, Apparently, she was mean to Robin and the other ladies. And the other it, three ladies. She was yes. definitely targeting who her meanness was aimed at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're not usually mean to men. <laughs> so is that right? That's not well, how that, it works. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is interesting. It is. It's a it's a terrible pattern of behavior. I mean, I'm hopeful that the good part that will come out of the Me Too movement is that girls will land, will learn how to just stand together and raise their voices up together instead of coming at each other and trying to be more important than another one another or better than one another. I'm hoping that this will be the spark that the kids will feel from it. Yeah. If they yeah. will really, you know, join as one. Yeah, I'm with you. And I'm hoping that the boys learn to respect, that the boys learn that pornography yeah. does not teach you how to treat a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and all the That's other... different books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I really loved this conversation, Katie. Thank you so much for being on the air with I us today. Too. Thank uh, you. I have put the cover of the book. In fact, I put the picture of you also on the podcast. So I've been going back and forth between the two. The book is called No More Mean Girls. I found it on Amazon. Do you have a website you want to uh, recommend? Uh, PracticalKatie.com. PracticalKatie.com. Oh, nice. I love I that. Love that. <laughs> All right, Practical <laughs> Katie. It was not so practical to get up this early, though, was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got two kids, so I'm used to it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, uh, Katie, again, that was such an enjoyable conversation. We did record it. We'll put it up as a podcast, and Robin will make sure you get a, a link to it later on, okay? All right. Thanks so much. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. We will be right back. Bye-bye. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA. Okay.